Hi, right, hey everyone, welcome. Um, so yeah, so maximizing Visual Studio Code with DDEV. Um, my name is Mike, I'm with Drupal Easy, I'm Alt Mike Everywhere. Um, this is a little bit about me, but I wanted to, I wanted to do this as well. I am going to ask ChatGPT, I haven't practiced this, so I don't know if it's going to come out, to tell you a little bit about me as well. And I convinced some of the other presenters uh, at this time slot and the next one to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So let's give this a shot. Uh, write me 50 words or less, or tell me, tell me. Sure. Well, write me 50 words or less about, mm, I'll use Mike Anello, Ultimike, um, focusing on his, on his Drupal experience. Let's find out. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that. There we go. And why do you know his ultimate? You are prominent. I like that. With extensive experience, he's contributed significantly to Drupal's growth. Wow, this is better than I could have hoped for. Really. <laughs> I, apparently, I offer valuable insights through podcasts. True. Training. True. Consultancy. True. Uh, Anello's dedication to Drupal spans years. Yeah, that's just like 15, 16 years, something like that. Making him respectable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's so glad this is being recorded. That the is, intelligence thinks very highly of you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> That's my entire presentation. That's, that really could not have gone any better. Holy cow. Fantastic. All right, so um, the material from uh, this session um, comes directly from this part of the app. So tune out if you don't want to hear it um, Through a uh, a 90 hour professional module development course that I teach. Um, it's it's uh, two half days a week over 15 weeks. It's all online uh, via Zoom. This will be the third year. Uh, I'm the lead instructor. I wrote the course. Um, and we talk a lot about, or we, you know, we, we do a lot of making sure our developer environment is, is tip top and has all the great the right tools and makes it super efficient. Um, but then we dive deep into Drupal custom module development. Uh, deep, deep, deep. Uh, our next semester begins January 30th, if anyone's interested. We also have a 12-week beginner class, but you can go to drupaleasy.com if you want to hear more about that. All right, no more ads. What's the goal for today? Um, I'm going to show you a good, solid way to set up Visual Studio Code for Drupal module development. Um, a lot of this is going to focus on recommended extensions and their configuration. Um, and if I have time at the end, I'm going to do my, pretty much in every presentation, every course, I always yell and scream about settings.local.php, because if you're not using this in your local environment, you're doing it wrong. And that's more of an opinion, but it's a very strong opinion, so. Respect you. Yeah. <laughs> so prerequisites, um, you know, to really um, to take full advantage of what I'm about to present. You know, you should use DDEV or know something about DDEV. Um, although we were just talking before that we started recording, everything I'm about to show you will work with Lando as well, but some of the configuration might be a little bit different. <coughs> um, Visual Studio Code. Um, I, have, I have a Drupal 10 site up and running. Um, it's one I created yesterday. I taught, I taught a full day of a class here yesterday. Um, I, it does include the Drupal development dependencies as well, which are required for some of the tools we're going to be using. Um, and you should have some comfort with command line. You should understand that Drupal has coding standards, right? Um, and maybe some knowledge of, of using Xdebug as well, or what Xdebug does for you. Um, and there is kind of an alternate way to set up what I'm going to show you, uh, but that really is, it involves installing PHP and Composer in the host operating system. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it's ridiculously easy using Homebrew to install those two things. Um, and then you can also install this thing called Drupal uh, Coder as a special, uh, as a separate project. And that will give you tools like PHP STAM, which we're going to talk about, and PHP CS, which we're going to talk about, um, globally available. Yeah, just, question. just making sure we'll have access to the slide afterwards. I don't need to like think about anything. I will give you access to a whole bunch slide of stuff. Okay. There will be, I have a bunch of QR codes coming up. So you'll have access to the slides, as well as there'll be bit.ly links and QR codes. So everything I mentioned, all the configuration, I have GitHub gist that you can copy and paste from. Um, yeah, you'll have access to all this. All right, so first of all, I am showing you one way of doing all this. 
It is not the only way to do it. Okay? I teach a lot. I teach you know, Drupal developers a lot. Um, so I am very comfortable saying that the way I'm going to show you how to set this stuff up is really good. So it's my recommended way of doing it. But you might find a better way that works for you. So keep that in mind. I think what I'm going to show you is a good place to start, though. And like, you know, we want this stuff to evolve and get better. So it's always a moving target. Right? So today, what I'm going to show you is a really good solution. But a year from now, maybe there's going to be a slightly better way of doing this stuff. Maybe there's going to be a new extension that does something that we didn't expect. So just keep all those things in mind. All right, so this is the, kind of our starting point, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire up VS Code here in a minute, but I already have all of these extensions um, installed. Um, so remote, and so one of the key things to make all this work as smoothly as it's going to is I use the Remote Explorer extension, which is a, an official Microsoft extension, um, and that allows me to connect VS Code directly to my DDEV web container. So, I'm by, so when I open up my project in VS Code, I'm not looking at the code base in Mac OS X. I'm, I'm jacked in directly to that Docker container that DDEV created for me. So I'm actually looking at the, the, um, the code base in the, in the Linux container that, that is the, the DDEV web container. Using this unlocks a lot of this other stuff to really work well within VS Code. Um, so that's kind of the, 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 I don't even want to call it a hurdle, but that's the, that's the key that unlocks a lot of this. Um, PHP debug is what helps uh, xdebug do its thing. Uh, PHP doc blocker just helps us write better documentation blocks, the methods you know, and functions that we write. I'll demo that. Uh, PHP IntelliFence. This brings VS Code, I'm not going to say up to par with PHP Storm, but it goes a long way towards providing code introspection and autocomplete things and being able to bounce between classes and methods in VS Code the way you could already do or that you can do in PHP Storm out of the box. Um, PHP Sniffer and Beautifier, this is what connects via the VS Code interface with PHP CS and PHP CDF, which are the tools the community uses to um, adhere to coding standards. Uh, how many people use PHP Stamp? Yeah, you should be. If you write code, you should be using PHP Stamp. It's a great tool. Um, it's a static analysis tool. It will help you write better PHP. Full stop. And um, we will set it up so that it will work kind of alongside PHP CS, and it will just watch you type. And if it has suggestions on how you can write that method or that line of code better, it will give a little red squiggly, and it will suggest things. It's fantastic. Um, how many people write automated tests? PHP and a test. Well, you get this, you install things this way, this way, you'll never have to type PHP unit and then a path to a test again. Right? You can run tests directly from the VS Code interface using this um, extension. And then hopefully, if you're using VS Code, you're using Drupal Smart Snippets. Um, this is one place where VS Code has an advantage over PHP Storm. Um, this is written by a member of the Drupal community. Um, uh, Andy Bloom is his name. And um, how many people uh, have to do that hook form author ever? Right? Or have to make their own form elements in code? Show me where on api.drupal.org or on drupal.org, show me a good like, documentation page for doing that. Because it does not exist. There's no one place to go and say, oh, I wonder what form elements I have, I have available. Th this is a queue via autocomplete. It's a huge time saver. You can, do, um, you can have access to services, render, um, array, uh, render elements, form elements, and hook autocomplete because of this. Huge time saver. So I will mention, if you decide not to drink all of the Kool-Aid, and maybe just drink some of it, if you don't use Remote Explorer, then there is an outstanding DDEV manager extension. That basically, all of those DDEV commands you have to type, they're now in the VS Code interface. So this is really, really good. But if we're talking directly to the container, we kind of don't need that. Then it's not really applicable. Yeah. Um, just quickly, because I know it's not the point of the talk, but I wonder right. if you could um, spend a quick moment um, kind of comparing um, you know, VS Code versus 
PHP Storm. And obviously there's a price point difference yeah. there, but... So just, first, yeah, I will answer that. My son has some internal radar that when I'm teaching or presenting, he will call me <laughs> every time. So that, check, that box has been checked. Um, yeah, so price difference, number one. Right. Okay? Um, PHP Storm has been around a lot longer. Um, there's a local development survey uh, within the Drupal community uh, in 2020, this year, 2023. And um, it's somewhere like 60% of respondents use PHP Storm, and about a third of them, not a third of them, then another 30% are using VS Code. Um, but the numbers are kind of equalizing. Um, VS Code, or the, recent, the most recent incarnation of VS Code, um, is really excellent. It's, it's free. Um, there's actually an open source version of it called, um, so called Codium, VS Codium. Um, PHP Storm gives you a lot of things out of the box. Like you don't need two, four, six, eight extensions or eight plugins in PHP Storm to achieve equivalence. Um, so that's that's kind of the advantage. Well, the two advantages or the two main advantages for PHP Storm are you get more out of the box, and setting up X debug is a little bit easier in PHP Storm. Um, the advantage of VS Code, it's free. And honestly, I, I would point to this extension right here. It's very good. Everything else, I mean, there's, are, there's small differences here and there, but they're pretty equivalent except for those four things. Yeah. So hopefully I answered your question. Yep, that's so, great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I have a question about the screen. So it's got the free test for Yeah, I'm going to show it to you, but go ahead. Uh, okay. I mean, so I'm just curious if you can use Git within the container. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, you can. You don't have to. So, but you know, if you do, you have to make sure you do like dev off SSH to get your keys in there so you can authenticate, but you can push and push and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so here's the big picture of how we're going to do things. Because we're going to set up VS Code to be jacked in to the container, we can't do a dev start within VS Code. We have to kind of do, we can, but we can't, you know, you can't be jacked into the container if the container's not up and running. So we're going to do a dev start just in, in, the, in the terminal. And I'm going to do all this in front of you, so there's not going to be a lot of sleeves. Um, then I'm going to launch VS Code, then I'm going to connect to the dev web container using the remote explorer extension. So, and, you know, I, 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 sometimes I'll, I'll draw a picture of it because sometimes that helps, but let me just do it for you. And then if it's not clear what's happening, we'll, we'll go from there. All right, so just a regular old terminal. And I'm in my, just so you know, this is that big enough. Can I make it bigger? Yeah. Just a Drupal 10 site. But I, I, I spun it up yesterday. So I'm going to do, I always do a DDEV restart. I don't know why. Even though it's not running, it's kind of built into my fingers at this point. And I've got one ginormous client database that yeah. As soon as that project is done, we get <laughs> So we're going to start up this regular old DF start. You know, this is the container, this web container right here. This is the one I'm going to you know, connect to. All right, so I don't even know VS Code running yet. I just I really want to show you that, how to do this from scratch. So I'm going to fire up VS Code. And actually, here, I'm going to close this window because I'm going to, I don't want it to be a cheat. So I'm going to make this full screen. Okay, so as of right now, VS Code is open, but I'm not looking at any folder yet. But as of right now, it's, it's kind of mac os like, all right? But I want it to connect directly to that running web container. So I'm going to come over here. There's a remote explorer extension. I told you those three inches were going to be important over on the left. <laughs> this, is, this is it. And so here, I've got a list. So what this extension is doing is basically it's, making some, it's doing a Docker, probably a Docker PSA or something like that, and asking what containers exist. And you know this one's running, and this is literally Diva. This is my NetCamp project. This is the web container. This is the the, the database container. Okay. Well. And then there's a couple of just generic Diva containers that are running. Mm -hmm. But those are the only running containers because I've only done a Diva start in one project. So I'm going to tell VS Code, connect to that web container. 
So it'll take a second. Oh, I'm zoomed in, that's why. But I want to show you one. So I'm going to actually open the project here in through Mac OS, because I want to show you one subtle difference. All right, so this is connecting to the code base through Mac OS. The directory name is Nedkin. But the way DDEV and Lando and most Docker containers work, um, when you set up a Docker container, you're basically syncing an internal directory, something internal to that container, with an host container, with a host directory. So Netcamp is my host directory. So if I go to my, and I'm actually just even, I'm going to close this one completely. We're not going to need it. I mean, it's pretty clear. I'm talking to the, this is the, it's var slash www slash html directory inside of my DW container. So it's the same code, but now I'm looking directly at the, the code base as it exists in the container. So everything that DDEV, I'm sorry, everything that Visual Studio sees and does is no longer relative to Mac OS. It's relative to that container, which is why, you know, there's no DDEV manager out here because it's like it's, it's inside the container already. DDEV operates in Mac OS 10 to manage containers. So that's really the key to unlock all this. So the, as far as VS Code is concerned, there is no Mac OS 10. Right? It is looking at that container. Which means, when I configure PHPCS, I'm basically going to tell VS Code, run PHPCS, not the version that I have in Mac OS X, but the version that's inside the container. And that's what we want, right? Especially the PHP Stam, Composer, PHPCS. We don't want to run, excuse me, <coughs> you know, if our web server inside the container that's using some version of PHP. Well, we want all of our tools using the exact same version of PHP. We don't want our web server to be running PHP 8.1, because that's what's in the DF container, but then all of our tools running PHP 8.0, because that's what's in Mac OS 10. We want them all using the same version of PHP. Using this remote explorer is what unlocks that function. Is that mostly clear? All right, so we now have our project up and running. So let me come back here. What's next? All right, so the, all, all those extensions that I showed you about, we're going to go to the extensions page of VS Code in a second. Um, you know, it's a little quirk. It's not, a, it's not a, a bug or anything, but some extensions, even though you have them installed in VS Code, they have to be installed in the container. So honestly, I don't actually think it's moving their code into the container. I think it's more of like um, um, connecting them to the container, letting them know that they're, you know, they're looking at the file system inside of the container. Um, so just be aware, not all, not all extensions will have this little button, but whenever I open up a project, I always go to the extensions. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. Click on that. And it'll think for a second. All right, so this is not all of them, because all of them, like remote, the remote explorer doesn't need to be inside the container. That just need, I just use that to get here. Um, and then the Drupal smart snippets, that one just gets installed globally. Um, that's up here in local installed. But the rest of these are installed in the container. And it's just that blue button. So pretty easy. But the debug, backlog, and telefence. PHPCS, PHPCN, and test this part. All right, so now we've got some configuration to do. Um, so important thing to note about you know, PHP Storm, a lot of IDEs do this the same way. There's uh, user settings, which I kind of think is global settings. User settings are applicable for all of your projects. But each workspace, each project, can have its own settings as well. And the project settings will override any user settings. So this is kind of important, okay? Because 
on some projects, I'm going to use Remote Explorer and talk directly to the web container. But there might be other projects where I'm not going to do that. So, you know, paths to PHPCS might be different. So I don't want to hard code the same path for every project to PHPCS. I want to be able to have that per project. So that's why we have two levels of settings. Um, you can get to most settings through the standard like settings, dialog area, and VS Code. Um, I actually think it's easier just to edit the settings directly in the JSON files. And I'm not going to give you that code, you know, that, that, that JSON configuration as well. Um, but we're going to open up both files. I'm going to show you this, the configuration. We'll, we're not going to go line by line. We're going to kind of group by group. Um, but we're going to add a bunch of configuration to really get you know, have these things shine. And then, um, you know, this is the user settings we're going to use, and you'll have access to these slides. So you can either write this down now, or I'll give you a, a, a bitly link for these slides as well. Um, and, but there's also going to be workspace settings. So, all right. Uh, yeah, all right, so we're going to come back to that. So let me just show you the settings. So I'm going to do Command Shift P. This is the command palette. Um, you can access everything, all of this code, menu items, hotkeys, everything. There, so it's super handy. Um, it's you know it's, it's uh, search as a type, and then after a while, you know everything that you use often just stays up top. So you can see the three most common things that I open up there. But if you don't see the stuff you want, you just start typing workspace. Oh, or you have to spell it right. Work. There you go. All right. So we're going to open up that. And then we're going to open up the user settings as well. And I'll make this bigger. Like that. And like that. So user settings, first of all. Again, I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, and these settings are a combination of the recommended settings from um, Drupal.org has a VS Code page, a recommended way of setting up VS Code. Um, I don't 100% agree with what's on that page. We're like in 75% agreement. So I use that as a starting point when I added some stuff. So a lot of this stuff up here, this is just to, to meet Drupal coding standards, you know, file association, so that VS Code knows to treat got module files as PHP files. So nothing. Um, I've got a bunch of um, exclusions here. So like PHP Storm, VS Code will index your code base so that you can search for things faster. But you don't need stuff like your Git directory index. Um, you don't need, so the watcher is kind of, um, as you're typing, it will let the extensions know. So it extends it to new things. But you know, for these, you don't need to worry about that. So I just exclude a bunch of stuff. It just makes indexing faster, makes VS Code faster in general. Um, some more just kind of standard um, uh, stuff to help me uh, uh, code the standards and just some miscellaneous stuff. Nothing important there. And then the rest of this, there's not a whole lot, um, but you can kind of see how I roll is I'll put the name of the extension in the comment and then the configuration for that extension. So this is the IntelliFence, this is Doc Blocker, and this is just one little thing for Google Smart Settings. So then I put this all in the GitHub just for you, so you can have access to that. And then this is the cool one, or this is the important one. Um, so for uh, notice PHP stand, there's no configuration, which is great. Uh, but PHP Sniffer and Beautifier, I, I just want to go through this real quick, but this is basically the path that VS Code needs to use to run PHP CS. And notice this is, you know, this is our code base or our project root inside of the container. If I had VS Code hooked up to Mac OS, this would definitely start, I think it's what, slash users and slash Michael and then whatever. So this, these two lines, this line, these are key in getting PHP CS and PHP CDF to work because it's actually using paths in the container. Same thing for this PHP linking path. So um, 
this works for TDEF. In uh, like Lando, for example, I believe this would be slash app instead of slash bar slash HTML slash or If you have your own custom Docker containers, you know whatever your project needs is in your project. So it looks like a lot, but it's it's fairly reasonable stuff. All right, that's the setup. Once we have all that, how are we doing on time? And this time flies by all, every single time. All right, so let's do some uh, quick demos. So I'm actually going to oh, yeah, PHP spam, PHP CS. When you set stuff up, there's no additional configuration that I showed you, right? Obviously, you have to have Drupal installed with the core dev dependencies. And since this is a live demo, I have to have a little bit of luck that you know, something doesn't go awry. <laughs> But I'm going to go, um, I actually created a very silly, simple little module here yesterday. And if I go into my, can, well, I'll show it to you up here. If I do view, can you see that? Problems. There is, and I'm going to close this now. There is a problems panel. And you can see these errors are coming from PHP Stack. Now, normally, if you want to have PHP stand analyze a file, it's PHP stand analyze dash dash level equals two and then path to the file. But the way we have things configured, we just kind of get them in here. And let's see, that's, uh, those are on line 23. Yeah, so and they're even like red squiggly with that stuff. So I love this stuff. Because I'm the type of person who, like, on my phone, I have, like, a, a bubble that says I have a message. I, I have to look at the message. I can't have any bubbles on my phone. Like, it's not allowed. And it's the same thing with these red squigglies on my bubble. That has to be taken care of me. Um, so let me introduce a quick little PHP CS, like, coding standard violation. There's a coding standard violation. Uh, there is. Array indentation error. Expected 6 to 5, 9, and I got a little red squiggly there. <laughs> so the fact that you have this in real time as you're working, this trains you. This trains you to be a better developer. Um, PHP CS is um, the coding standards. They just, um, that's an all or nothing thing. One of the things I love about PHP STAN is you can configure PHP STAN. Let me fix that because that's going to annoy me if I don't. So this I didn't show you, but I'm going to show you. You can configure PHP stand to run at a particular level. There's nine, 10 levels, 0 through 9. If you're new to PHP stand, start at level 0. Fix all those errors. Then, when you're comfortable with that, go up to level 1 and level 2. It's a game. Right? You're going to become a better developer if you do it. All right, so that's that one. Let's see. Uh, Sort the order of these real quick. Hello, come on. There we go. Oh, Drupal Smart Snippets. Oh, that's so good. Drupal Smart Snippets. All right, this is in a, well, it doesn't matter what code I'm in. I'm just going to, I do have to open up a dot module file. Let's start with a, um, oh, here, this is the example I did yesterday. We delete that. We're going to spoil it. So I'm in a dot module file. So this is where you put your hooks, right? So let's say you want to implement a hook. Well, here's Drupal Smart Snippets. Which hook do you want to implement? I could you know, type more and narrow it down. But let's say we're going to do this one. I hit Enter. And I've got the entire function signature. Um, and I'm good to go. And it even like replaces the word hook with the, the machine name of the module. Say I need access to a service class in here. Um, but I'm not 100% sure of the service name. Well, I just start typing and see at SER for at service. Here are all the Drupal core service classes. Right, so let's say uh, I need to do a, I don't know, this one. And it will basically, you know, when you're a module, this is allowed, right, to call, you know, the Drupal core. Uh, class, service method, load this, uh, this service class, and boom, how I have access to it. And it even does a type hint. Even though I, the type hint really should only be on one line, i got to remember to open up a, uh, an issue for that with triple smart snippets. All right, so we'll leave that in there. 
So the one that really saves a lot of time, in my opinion, is Act 4. So you want to, you know, and actually I always, let me do it this way, we're going to do something like form, and this is going to be a, let's do like an email field, right? So what's that going to look like? Right, so this is all you need to basically define an email field on a Drupal form. And you don't have to use all these attributes, but it, it puts them in there so you can use them if you need to, but it gives you the most, the, the most useful. Is it, does it put in the defaults you need? Like, like there's sometimes I'm like, I don't want to put this in because I don't want someone to screw it up later. Um, if it does come in, is it come in with the de required defaults or? Uh, some of them, like required as true and empty title. I mean, really the important one, well, it really depends on the field. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, a, it, it's a fast starting point, right? Because otherwise, like I know me, I would have to find you on the email field. First of all, I would spend five minutes trying to remember, is it email or mail? Which one, what's the, what's the title? Now I'd have to go on the API with Drupal and Oregon and find it, which the documentation for this sucks. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It, it sucks. Um, <laughs> <people don't use laughs> <that. laughs> Just for form API. Just for form API. Um, if you're dealing with render arrays. I don't know why it come at the end. Get rid of that comment. Maybe a semicolon would be better, right? If you're dealing with render arrays, or render elements, I'm sorry. You know, you want to render a field set. Yeah, it gives you the type. And again, I always forget that you have to do render. I might open up, oh jeez, I can't type and talk. This is not a very good example because there's no, no attributes there. But you, you see what I mean. So the autocomplete from Drupal Smart Snippets is pretty freaking awesome. By the way, so here, I, let me, um, I'm going to introduce some more PHP CS issues here. Extra spaces, all kinds of places, stuff like that. Um, the way I have things configured, if you do a right click in VS Code, there's a format document. This will run PHP CDF and fix a lot of those formatting issues. So if you don't use Drupal coding standards, this is a really good first thing to do with your own code. Open up a module you wrote, and you know, well first configure VS Code, the way I showed you. Open up a module you wrote and format document. And boom, you won't be 100% Drupal coding standards because PHP CDF can't, doesn't quite do everything, but it's good for like 75% of the of the most common mistakes. Do Emmet or Prettier not format PHP? Do they not? Well, they, they can, but the way I have things configured, I am basically telling the VS Code here that the default formatter is, this is the, um, the extension. So, so that extension will do a better job if you're coding PHP? Well, because this extension is tied into the Drupal coding standards. It will format it according to Drupal coding standards. If you have the appropriate configuration for another formatter, it will do the same thing. Okay. Right? And I believe in VS Code, I think, yeah, there's format document with, mm -hmm. so you can use alternates there as well. I answered your question, I think, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, PHP IntelliFence. This is, so IntelliFence, I should mention, um, it's freemium. So there's a free version, which, is, which I'm using. Um, there's a paid version that gets you more functionality. I have never needed the paid version. I kind of feel guilty about it, but, um, so what this does, and it does a lot. This is the one that kind of gets us equivalence almost with PHP Storm for PHP uh, code introspection. Um, but this does stuff like, if you're, so this is a, you know, my class extends, this is a Drupal core class. There's a go to definition when you right click, it's also F12. But that instantly jumps, it opens up that class, lock base, which is a core class, and it brings us to the top of the class, and you can see what's in that class. So we can very quickly navigate 
through, if you want to see, well, what's in this interface? Well, let's look at the definition. There, this is the definition of the interface. Um, it does a lot more than that. It does a lot more than that. It, it, you know, it's got a bunch of autocomplete stuff. Um, but honestly, the go to definition is the one that I probably use 80% of the time. So that's the one I'm going to demo, but it does a lot more. PHP debug. All right, so uh, debugging and in, in setting up debugging in VS Code, a little bit, like I said, a little bit more, like one more step than PHP Storm. So uh, I actually, I forgot to delete it from yesterday, so it's kind of already set up. So I'm gonna fake it here real quick. And let me go in and delete this. Let's, actually, I don't even have to do that. I can do it over here. So ignore this, ignore that I'm deleting this. Delete permanently, go away, okay. All right, so let's say, and I always recommend, if you're gonna do debugging, set it up by just setting a breakpoint in Drupal's index.php. Just, this is like the good test case, right? So with ddev, when you're inside the container, you can just type enable x debug. All right, and so I will draw, I know this is gonna come through on the recording, if I can find a white mark, whiteboard marker, I'm gonna draw something real quick, because like, Every time I see Chinese use Xdebug, this always helps. So I'm going to draw it over here. I'm sorry for you guys over there, but I don't think that's real whiteboard, is it? Is that whiteboard? I think it might be a smartboard, actually. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm going to draw on this side. I'm sorry. <coughs> All right. So this is our web server. This is our, so I'm going to do web server. This is a browser, so Firefox, whatever. And this is VS Code. Okay? What does debugging do? The browser makes a request to the web server. The web, so this is a request. The web, the web server returns HTML. We're good on that, right? That's normal. When we tell DDEV, or Orlando, or whatever, to, to enable debugging. What that does is that basically tells the web server to send out debugging data, usually over port, by default, port 9003. Right, so that's step one. We have, we've told, we have told DNA to, for every request, not only send out HTML, but send out debugging data on a different port. So we have to do, we have to get that, that data flow going. The second part is, we have to have VS Code listen and open up a port to accept that data. Because when it accepts that data, then it basically stays in sync. It knows that as this HTML or as this page gets rendered, you know, this data is basically saying, I'm running line 312, now I'm running line 313, 314. And that's how we can debug in VS Code. So we have to broadcast and we have to listen. So the broadcasting part is easy. That's what I just did. The listening part is we have to do a little bit of configuration in the VS Code. This is the part that PHP Storm does automatically for us. So doo -doo -doo -doo, I'm going to actually just open up this link real quick because this is literally the code that I need. Copy that. And I'm going to go to, this is the debug, the PHP debug extension. I'm going to click on that. It's going to tell me I need to create a launch.json file. And it's going, to, it's going to default to a bunch of stuff, but we don't need any of it. We just need what I gave you. And it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bunch of metadata, but it's basically saying, open up port 9003, because that's where DDEV is going to broadcast from. And then as you get information in, you know, um, actually, we don't even have to, with the way we have things set up, we don't even have to do path mapping. Because VS Code is looking at the same code as the web server is. So the paths are already mapped. So we've just got some XDebug settings and, you know, when to start it. So anytime um, that we, uh, we launch the debugger, we're going to start listening. It's PHP debugging information. So. We set that up, 
we have an extra bug going, and then we listen. I really don't like the fact that both PHP Storm, well, PHP Storm has a, like an old style telephone <coughs> icon. Um, this is a play button, and it really should just, you know, something indicating listening, maybe an ear, I don't know. I, I don't like the play button for some reason, but it's play. So notice when it's listening, you get red down here, which is really nice. PHP Storm doesn't really give you that much of a visual indicator. You uh, put something. You did something. You did something on the smart on the smart board. board. Oh, look at that! Awesome. <laughs> I had problems with this yesterday. Somehow I was able to draw it yesterday. As well. So this is just letting us know that hey, I port nine thousand three. Something's happening. Um, so now we're listening. So now we have to make something happen. I haven't even opened up the site yet. So I'm just going to go to put my fingers on the right keys, net, cam, dot, d, dev, dot, site. Oh, there we go. Oh, and I've already hit enter. But let me here just go forward. It looks like it's off by the line. There we go. There we go. So I'm debugging. Execution is paused. You know, I put the, the breakpoint here. I, I, I went past that by one. But you know, the value of this variable is now you know, somewhere in here. So this is this is the bug. Um, but again, if you cannot just understand a little bit about what you need to do, then it, you know it's even the same thing in PHP Storm. It's a two-step process. Turn on the broadcaster and then listen for it. But now we can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, we can um, skip over lines. We can dive into this is like the send method. So this is just standard debugging, but. It becomes relatively easy in um, VS Code once you once you have the, the little bit of configuration that we need. So let me turn off, and then obviously, well, not obviously, but um, you know, sending out this data um, it actually slows the web server down quite a bit. So don't leave X debug enabled unless you're actively using it. I have two minutes left. That's not Good cool. They <laughs> kill me at work. What have we got? All right, I'm going to, let me see what we got here. <coughs> All right, uh, I'm going to skip unit test explorer. Um, but honestly, if you know, if you have PHP unit set up, all you have to do is install this extension. Well, I got it right here. So it will, in a second, it will scan, or it's scanning right now, looking for tests in my workspace. Come on. There, there, I promise. There we go. So, and then we can run tests right from here. So, boom, there's a test being run. It's a Drupal core test for the block content module. And it's running, it's running. And we're going to see the result there in a second. So, I'm going to turn away because I know we're almost done. All right, settings are local. Um, use it. If you don't use it already, Download the slides, read this. It turns off caching on your local. It puts all errors on your screen for a local. It doesn't have a whole lot to do with VS Code or DDEV. It just it makes me crazy when I see developers not using it. So it's a public service message. Um, and then, so yeah, so what else? So I do occasionally use, there's a Trig Language 2 extension that's pretty good um, for Drupal developers. Um, I'm a big list person, so there's a to-do. Um, extension that if you have an app to do in a code comment, it will compile all those in one of those little tabs on the bottom of VS Code, which is really nice. This is that documentation page on Drupal.org I told you about. It actually recommends an empty index extension. You don't need it. Just set up things the way I showed you, you don't need it. Um, there's a Composer extension. I haven't used it. But for some reason, Composer is something I, I still like to type out. I don't, I don't really have a good reason for it. Um, I'd love to hear about other extensions that folks use. Um, so let me know. There's a course, and there's the link to the slides. Nice. And I'm right on time. <laughs> so I know that was a bit of a blur, some of that. Um, but that's why I have the slides. That's why there's a bunch of other links and QR codes in there. So all of that configuration, um, the, the user, the workspace settings, the user settings, and the launch.json, they're, they're in GitHub just for you. And my list of all the extensions are there. <coughs> you make your slides public access to the slides. 
You know what? Every time. Yeah. Every time I do that. That's by um, donation only, so I put, a, I put a hat out there, and then, uh, <laughs> did it not go? Come on. Oh, I'm so silly. It's like I'm, it's, it's like I'm opening another document that I just have to share. All right, so, yeah, none of you are my wife, so yeah, I guess you do need to. Um, so anyone with the link, and I'm going to give you all um, commenter access. There we go. Thank you. So you may, um, if, if you think there's something wrong or something oh, could be worded better, just leave a comment in there. I'm always fascinated by the thing. But these are all of you who are accessing. Mm -hmm. You don't get your names, you all get animals. So one of you is a leopard. One of you is a giraffe. Yesterday we had a hippo uh, yeah. in class. It's kind of any questions? Yeah. Um, so I'm taking by the fact this is a DDAV and not a Lando um, presentation. So do you prefer DDAV over Lando? I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just kind of curious what. I do. Uh, I you know. Okay. So disclaimer: I am heavily involved in the DDAV community as well. But I teach Lando as well. In that 15 week course, we cover DDAV, Lando, VS Code, and PHP Storm. Everything I showed you today, you can do with Lando. Some of the configuration is slightly different. I prefer DDEV because DDEV is easier to get started with. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the, the uh, enable xDebug, disable xDebug, that, that's part of DDEV. To do something similar in Lando, you've got to write some YAML code. Um, um, I will also say, I, so now we're going to move into like my opinion here. So I want to be very clear about that. Um, I believe DDEV is much better supported than Lambda. I believe DDEV, um, um, I know, and this is more of a fact, DDEV has very regular releases, much more so than Lambda. Um, DDEV is very actively used in other open source communities as well. It's now backed by a, a 501c3. Um, so it is, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in DDEV. Um, I believe if Drupal wasn't around anymore, DDEV would still be around. I'm not sure if I could, I could say the same for Lambda. Mm -hmm. So that's, I could go on. I, I literally wrote the book on DDEV. Like Which is available at OSTraining.com. It's out of date, so don't buy it. It's out of date. Okay. Somebody tweeted last week that DDEV is not Again, not official, but is becoming the preferred recommended recommended yes. environment for Drupal development. No, it will be yeah. So the documentation pages. If you're new to Drupal, you go to like, how do I install Drupal? Oh, wow. DDEV will be the recommended yeah. um, way of, of installing Drupal on your local version. Because I'm just talking to a digital agency that's going to work with my company, and yeah. they're like, oh, we're going to do it in Docker. You know, I, 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 if I had like a dollar for every developer or agency that I talk to that says, no, we use Docker, we're fine with Docker, that has swi since switched mostly to DDEV, but some to Lando, yeah. I could buy us all day. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, and I get it, you know, people get set in their ways and what happened. You know, I still know folks who use like Sublime or Vim for everyday Drupal development. People get sent away, so if it works for them, great. But you know, there are more modern tools that might just help. You know, I haven't seen anything that you can do in raw Docker that you can't do in Docker. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can customize the heck out of your containers to do that. So, but whatever. Right. I mean, it's, right. it's whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. So I use PHP Storm and VS Code. Well, yeah, I'm using VS Code more for front end. Okay. Um, one of the reasons I kind of balk a little about using uh, VS Code for PHP is just it's installing more extensions and the possibility that things start to slow down on VS Code. Um, it's not that many extensions though. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get it. But if and so my and I've gotten this question before. So my um, response to that normally is, go look at all the, all the plugins that PHP Storm has enabled by default. Mm -hmm. 
And it's a, a bucket load more than this. <laughs> but so that's possibly also part of the reason that I sometimes switch to VS Code to right. get away from it. Yeah, it is, it's, it's surprising. Like if you go to the, the plugin page in the PHP Storm um, uh, settings area, there's a lot of extensions enabled by default that really don't need to be. Like I would recommend if you use PHP Storm, that's one of the first things I do. Is I will go in, especially when there's like a big update. I will go in and, and start unchecking the extension. Like I am never going to use. I don't need like the Ruby extension. You know, it, it's enabled by default in PHP Storm. I think that's fine. I don't know if that's fine. But there's there's a lot. So I, I mean, I'm not going to below your question, but I, I don't. I think it's a non-issue. To be honest with you, VS Code fast. And I, you know, I, again, from a performance standpoint, it's a tech center. Mm -hmm. Like, really, where do you see the performance? I, you know, I will see it in the end when it's indexed. Right. That's, and so I mitigate that in both PHP Storm and VS Code with those exclusions that I showed you earlier. But yeah. otherwise, I mean, what's what are you waiting for? In your, you know, sure, if you type a Q and then you have to wait before it appears, that's a big problem. But. But otherwise, it's an IDE. It's static most of the time. So it's performance is you know, maybe opening files or closing files. But I, you know, I can understand if you are, I guess another place, like if you're, if you're typing and then you like type two or three lines before like red squiggles start appearing, you know, two or three lines above, and that's, that gives us how long it take for PHP CS to do its thing or PHP stay on, then yes, then I would see your point. Um, but that I, I haven't seen. And granted, I do. I, you know, my machine actually now is it's a 2019 machine. So I think it's an M1. Or I think it's a. Does it say here? Oh, yeah. oh no, 2021. I'm sorry. It's 2021. So it's two years old. Um, it, it's still like I have, I have zero thoughts about needing a new machine because it still, it still screams. It's a fast machine. Anybody else? All right. Thank you very much. All right.